it's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Bryant Truett, MBA, CCS, CFE of Bryant Tan and Associates. He's a certified fraud examiner. Bryant Truett's presentations draw from over 20 years of dental experience investigating and correcting profitability and compliance vulnerabilities and helping to protect from future loss. Bryant is CEO of Bright Tan and Associates, a professional team of investigative experts and certified dental coders who work with owners of private pay, Medicaid, and Medicare dental practices in the USA and Canada. Bryant's programs focus on reducing vulnerability, identifying profitability problems caused by internal and external actions and missteps, and how to provide accurate due diligence necessary to grow and continue to provide the highest levels of standard and patient care. He has uncovered over $11 million of fraud and embezzlement. My gosh. First of all, you're in a Kerrville, Texas. Is that a suburb of like Dallas or Fort Worth? or? It's outside of San Antonio. It's, uh, you're familiar with Walter Haley. I live in the same area as Walter Haley. He used to be up the road from me. He was in Huntsville. No, he was in Hunt. Just, oh, Hunt. Just as I am. Well, that was close. I got the Hunt. I just added it. So he was in Hunt, Texas? Yep. And how many years ago did he pass? Oh, my gosh. It's been probably seven years. Seven years. Well, a big shout out to Walter Haley. Uh, he was just, he did so much for dentistry. Was he a friend of yours? Yes, he was. He, we, we used to laugh. I can stood, uh, I could uh, stand on my deck and he uh, would be standing on his and we could wave to one another. He was across the valley from me. Yeah, he was just a hell of a guy. Hell of a guy. Um, so the, I'm just going to cut right to the chase. How the heck did you get into the dental fraud business? How, where, how did that journey start? Well, I was in my uh, personal dental uh, office and the doctor asked me to step into his office after I finished with my teeth, getting my teeth cleaned. And he said, my uh, front desk lady managed to take $153,000 from me. And I said, well, I, what can I do for you? And he said, I don't know, but I need some guidance and counsel. And I said, okay, and I let me do a little research. So I did some research. I came back to him, gave him some guidance, and then I went off and, and became a certified fraud examiner, and I specialize in dentistry and have for over 20 years. And that's how I started with my own personal dentist. And I also went to Walter Haley because of boot camp and talked to him and he gave me an opportunity to speak to the doctors that came to his boot camp and that's how i started uh, the business um so your initials mba uh masters of business administration the cfe certified fraud examiner what's the ccs that's an internal control certification i'm uh, certified in, in business internal controls the application and implementation of internal controls so what does it specifically stand for, CCS? Certified? Uh, certified Control Specialist. Wow. So so for everyone listening to you right now today, driving into work, what percent of them listening to you right now are probably being embezzled against and have no idea? Through the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, we say about 43 to 47% will go through an embezzlement at least once in their career. Wow. And they'll pretty much also are saying, the lawyers are saying they'll all uh, get sued once in their career too. So they're going to get sued once. They're going to get embezzled from, uh, half of them will get embezzled from, um, and uh, half will get a divorce. That, that, that's a, uh, those, those are some tough things to go through. Um, what are, what are uh, what, what's the personality of a dental embezzler? I mean, it's not the lady who goes to church every Sunday, sings in the choir, and was your son's godmother, is it? Is it, it the... Uh, could it could be. It could be? <laughs> and I'm not saying that everyone that works in a dental practice in the front or in the clinical area is going to be that type of individual. The majority of them are outstanding human beings, and they do a marvelous job and a very tough, tough job. It's a tough job being on the front desk and handling the patients and the, all the inquiries. But then at times something changes and maybe they have a spouse that gets ill or a family member gets addicted to uh, 
some unfortunate situation. So they have a need all of a sudden to have to resort to ways to get financial resources that can aid the situation. And unfortunately, I have found over the 21 years I've been in this that it's a lifestyle addiction. They become addicted to the lifestyle. And a perfect example of that is one that I just finished uh, very recently. And the individual became addicted to the lifestyle and she could not tell her family members, her extended family members also, where the money was coming from. She just said that she got a pay increase. Well, when you embezzle $421,000, that's more than a pay increase. And she managed to do a lot of damage to this particular dentist. And it's very sad, but uh, that's what really happened. And we went in and, and caught her, and that case has been turned over to the authorities, and she will be prosecuted. So they're, so mostly what you're seeing is they're either desperate or they got addicted to a, a high-end lifestyle. That is correct. That's the majority of these situations. Some of them can feel that they're not appreciated. It all, it all depends upon the type of practice, the dynamics in the practice, the drama, the conditions, how much oversight the doctor provides. There's over, right now, over 21 years, however, I, I have found in excess of 70 red flags that can come up in a practice that would give guidance to a doctor and tell the doctor, he or she, that there's something going on. My God, you ought to write an article for Dental Town Magazine called the 70 red flags that you're being embezzled from. 43 to 47% of dentists reading this article are being embezzled from, and after doing this for 21 years and just dentistry here are 70 red flags. Hell, I, I, I want to read that one right now. In fact, just tell me. Tell me all those 70 red flags. And why, why is the flag always red? How come it's never a blue flag or a pink flag or a white flag? Why is it always a red flag? You know, that's a good question, and I can't answer that. Uh, it's just sort of like the red flag in front of the bull. Okay? We always said that. And, all right. And, and I, I can't really tell you why it has to be red. I also use the, the uh, saying weasel. There's a weasel in the practice because a weasel is very sneaky it can change directions very quickly. Uh, they are very clever and they are professional liars. And so I also have programs that I call the weasel programs. And I'd, I'd be happy to, I'll send the list to you and you can take a look at it. And uh, 70, uh, the 70 red flags. Do you, do you want to go over them now or do you want to uh, go on to other stuff? <laughs> I mean, you have to I, listen. Well, I can go over some of them with you right now because the other night I, I uh, uh, had a telephone conference with a, with a doctor and he described some of the problems that he was having in his practice and they're, they're classics. They're absolutely in fraud embezzlement 101 red flags. Like the lady on the front desk, his office manager, is also the bookkeeper. You, you don't want to have your office manager also being your QuickBooks person and that for obvious reasons. She was the only one making deposits at the bank. And so it was a situation that she was in control of all of the factors within the practice that involve money. Well, there's no separation of duties. And when you have that type of thing, you are just providing a atmosphere for nefarious activity and that's we preach very hard that you've got to have separation of duties and she also had administrative rights to the software well then she can get into the uh, into the audit trail and delete the audit trail well who is in control is the doctor in control no Another party is in control, and that's that's not where you want to be. And if I can uh, say a couple of things that to help prevent these type of activity, 
is one, find you a CPA that has dentist clients. Absolutely, at least 10, 12, 15 dentist client, clients. Companies like uh, Kane Waters is a specialist in this area. And find yourself an insurance uh, carrier that you can talk to about a fidelity bond. I recently wrote an article on our website about the, the need of having a fidelity bond, which is insurance to, that will protect you against employees, regardless of its front or back, that either steals dollars or they steal property. And I'll give you an example. Uh, recently, one of my clients, I finally got that client to take out a, a, a modest $25,000 fidelity bond and cost him $92 a year. That's like found money. And they will help protect you with a fidelity bond. And then you let everybody in the practice know that you carry insurance and that if there is money missing or property missing, the insurance comes in, takes over, and they are the ones who will investigate it and they will prosecute. Does that get a couple of ideas right there? And those are two really easy things. Uh, uh, I'm sure you know a lot of CPAs and that are uh, that handle dental clients and they need a doctor coming out of dental school needs to find a dental CPA and needs to have a fidelity bond. Does that give you a couple of ideas? That that does. Do you think that dental embezzlement is bigger today than when you entered the field 21 years ago or do you think it's the same or do you think there's less of it? It's dramatically increased. When Why? We, when we got into the business 21 years ago, we might go into a practice and find one or two schemes working. Today, we have found as many as 13, 14 different schemes working in a practice. And one of the reasons for that is that the people have gotten a lot smarter. They are much more, uh, they're more, much more astute when it comes to the computer and the software than they were 21 years ago, obviously. But in addition to that, they now have the ability to get online and learn more about the software. The software manufacturers, providers are doing a better job in training than they did years ago. So the whole industry, no matter if it's in dentistry, medicine, nonprofits, commercial businesses, the software is more sophisticated, but so are the people that are using it. And it's, it's just gotten worse. So the schemes have gotten more interesting. They're, 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 better, they're better formatted to work. And what happens is they always have one scheme that they, they focus on. But they'll have these other schemes working where if the, the doctor senses that something is wrong and the, the perpetrator senses that, that they are being watched, they'll move to another, another scheme and take the pressure off the main scheme they're after, say it's cash. They'll move over and, and they'll pay attention to maybe adjustments or some other scheme that they can put together. And then when the pressure moves off, they'll come back to their main scheme. They always return to their main area of focus. And another thing that we found in practices over the years, because we do boots on the ground. Yes, we do internet investigations, but our specialty is boots on the ground. And that's where you find what's really going on in the practice. You cannot find everything that goes on in the practice through the internet. But when you have boots on the ground, you find out where the action really is. Where is that thread that will, will let the rug come apart and you'll find everything that's underneath it. Does that make sense to you? And it, you get into the fabric of the practice and we have never found a practice that there's not someone else in that practice that senses something is going on. 
It is amazing. Everybody knows what everybody else makes in that practice. But they also, one person somewhere in that practice has a sense that something's not right. So we interview everybody in the practice during our visits. Is that? And they, they sense it's not right because she's either living above her means or? or... Yep. Or why does she come in on holidays when nobody else is in the practice? Or her whole personality has changed. She's more irritable or if it, uh, the guy, if it's an, uh, a male office manager, we, we caught one in New York State last year who we found by interviewing that he had another side consulting business going on on the side. And his whole personality of being in the practice and working with the people in the practice and cross training, all of that changed. He wasn't doing that anymore. His focus now was not the practice he was employed with, but trying to establish his own consulting business. So the personality changes. And that's one of the things that we look at. And we also uh, consider DISC. DISC can be a very, a very powerful assessment tool. In, in, in this uh, industry, as it can be in all industries. But, and we find uh, that there's a lot of traits that are similar. Um, how many, what percent of the time is the person working alone on this embezzling versus two people in the office working together? Uh, I would say the majority of the time, probably 75, 80% of the time it's one person. But there's that person that senses something's wrong. And it's generally the person, uh, another person in the practice that has a lot of tenure in, in dentistry or a lot of tenure in the practice, or maybe a friend of the office uh, administrator or the office person that is doing the nefarious activity. Uh, we've also seen a significant increase in prescription abuse. And we found a, a, a major, we did a major practice in a major uh, metro area, and we discovered a very active drug ring in the practice. It was a, a pedo practice, pedo ortho practice. And uh, the, the individuals managed to get a family member in as the receptionist and also the office manager, and they were able to uh, set up a, 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 a drug ring on pain pills, and uh, we alerted the law firm we were working with, and also they alerted the local authorities, and they came in and took out nine employees. Nine people were in on it? Nine people were in on it. There, How there much? Was, so it was prescriptions for what? Uh, hydrocodone? Vicodin? <laughs> No, hydrocodone. And what? And how many uh, pills were the prescription, and what were they selling them for? Eighteen hundred to two thousand pills a month, and they were selling them in an apartment complex that they lived in, and also at a flea market. Eighteen hundred to two thousand pills a month. Did you, did you ever find out what a pill was going for? They were selling them for over uh, ten dollars a piece, and. They were doing very well. Ten dollars, uh -huh. ten dollars a piece at eighteen hundred pills. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure that one out. Twenty thousand dollars a month. That's two hundred and forty thousand dollars a year. There's doctors, dentists, physicians, and congressmen who don't make that much money. Nor do I, or many other people. Um, at what percent of the time uh, is the person embezzling? think they are safe because they could blackmail the dentist because maybe they're having a relationship and the other and the dentist is married and if he caught and if he caught her he she could just say well do you want to get divorced what's that going to cost you what did i embezzle that was less so shut up and go away and i'll just leave or they're splitting opioid prescriptions themselves and uh, she could turn them over to the board what percent of the time is there a blackmail element involved a real element or an alleged element. Uh, that's one of the areas that 
some people have used in the past, along with hostile workplace, age discrimination. Um, there's several terms that are used commonly when people are caught like that, and one of them is also they, they don't refer to it as a relationship, they call it for services rendered. They use the term services rendered. That I got a housing allowance or he paid me for travel to and from the uh, my residence to the practice. So there's any number of terms that can be used, but generally it's, it's for services rendered. And I haven't had but one, two, maybe a half a dozen in 20 years. So services rendered means not a volunteer romantic relationship, but a prostitution. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what service rendered means. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so talk to my homies. Uh, you were, you were talking about the red flags. You were talking about the personality of a dental embezzler. Uh, but you, you touched on uh, separation of duties that you can't have your office manager doing uh, being your bookkeeper and making the deposits and uh, and depositing the checks and admin rights to the computer. Uh, what are what are the low hanging fruit separation of uh, duties uh, should every office be working on? Well, let's start with the the deposits and also the checks that are coming into the practice, which are that's going to be going away and. In the next five years, you'll probably see very, very few checks come in. That, that portion of the banking industry will be going away. So one of the things that can be done is uh, when they do direct deposit from the insurance companies, they won't tell the doctor that the checks are direct deposit and that they can get the EOBs offline on, on online off of the website and what they will do is they'll let the deposit come in and they'll go and get the the uh, the EOB offline uh, from from the website and they will make an adjustment to the EOB that is supposed to be taken off of the ledger say it's twenty dollars they'll increase it to thirty dollars which opens the an opportunity for them to take cash. That's that's one of the scams that they can run by inflating the co the EOB, which they have now in their hands, downloaded off the website. Or another another thing that can be done is when a, a patient comes in and they have credit card they can change the credit card from from uh, credit card or check they'll we'll, we'll use a check when they take a check from a, a patient they'll say that it was a credit card transaction they will hold the check wait for cash to come in put the check into the deposit and take the cash and offset the adjustment to the patient okay the books will be the books will be satisfied I mean satisfied the balances will be there so there's any number of ways that people on the front desk and it does not have to be the office manager it can be anyone on the front desk who can change transactions in the software that's why you need to have and HIPAA now requires passwords and, and security levels in the in the software for users and the problem you have there is the fact that doctor never changes the passwords and they they learn the passwords everybody on the front desk will know the passwords and they can change the passwords and then it becomes somebody else's problem not the person that took the money does that make have i explained that one well enough? oh yeah absolutely now, uh, some of the, well, what about using a credit card a patient comes in with, and pays with a credit card well credit card is is interesting they can use the credit card and they will change the amount of of the actual transaction let's say the transaction is twenty dollars they'll change the transaction to twenty five dollars and they'll put the transaction through at twenty five dollars instead of twenty dollars 
that gives them five dollars that they can do nefarious activities for in the practice. The adjustment on the on the computer will be the the twenty five dollars. They'll give a five dollar adjustment and credit the patient with twenty dollars, and that gives them five dollars that they can work with sometime during the day or the week to get five dollars out of the practice. Okay, so. By using the credit card, what you need to do is ensure that the 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 uh, the, uh, oh, uh, the the bulk pay uh, not the bulk payment the batch report that comes out of the credit card at the uh, credit card processor at the end of the day that has all of the transactions and the totals. You keep those. You don't let them throw those slips away. And when the merchant statement comes at the end of the month, you compare the transaction to the merchant statement. And you can see if the, if the two transactions match, that will help you. And then you go to the ledger and look at how much was the transaction that day for that particular patient. And then you're going to find out that there was a $5 difference. Okay? Mm-hmm. Wow, there's just so, so any, any other uh, schemes that you're working with? <laughs> we ran into we ran into one that that was uh, very interesting. We had a, a, a case where uh, gift cards. A lot of practices have used gift cards as motivational tools in the team in the practice to meet goals and objectives and this particular individual had the doctor provide this individual with two thousand dollars and went out and bought twenty dollar uh, gift cards and awarded based upon goals that were set in the practice to the to the team and awarded two or three months of gift cards at twenty dollars apiece and then all of a sudden the incentive program went away but all the gift cards were cashed well they think those gift cards can't be traced they can be if you know how to do it and that's how we caught the individual was with the gift cards we were able to trace the transactions and she stole about eighteen hundred dollars in cash by by using the gift cards. And she only awarded two hundred dollars worth of bonus gift cards to this team. Okay. Well, if you know how to trace those cards, we can find out exactly where the cards were used and what they were used for. And that's what we did. You um, were driving to your new office today. You're 27 years old. You just bought uh, the, the old man, uh, sold his practice. He's 65. He moved on. There's all of his uh, old employees who have been with him. 20, 30 years have been there. And now you bought this thing for $750,000, and you don't. You got student loans. You got overhead. Um, what should they be thinking about in setting up their books, their uh, separation of duties. What, what, how, how, coach this young kid how to set themselves up so that this doesn't happen to them, so that they can be the 55%, the 53 to 56, 7% that don't get embezzled from. goes back to the first thing I mentioned is find yourself a really good CPA that understands dentistry and has at least, I feel, at least 10 dental clients. And that, that that CPA will look at computer reports off of your software. They just don't look at the bank state. They, they peel back the onion and they look at reports that can be printed off of the software, off of Dentrix or uh, Eaglesoft or whoever it is. And you match that report up with the deposit slips and, and the bank statement and you, you track the money from the time the patient comes in the door to the time the patient leaves and you see that the money went to the bank. You, they've got to learn how to follow the money. It's, the old saying is very true, just follow the money. 
from the time it comes in the door to the time it goes to the bank, you follow it. CPAs that are not familiar with dentistry will only look at the bank statement and you will not find the fraud just with the bank statement. It, it's, you just can't do it. It's not there because there's too many ways to tr change the transactions, change it. I've had cases in, and one comes to mind in California where the individual changed the deposit slip at the bank, at the, at the, uh, where they fill out those, uh, over the counter deposit slips in the bank and changed it right there in the bank and took the money in the bank. So, that's one. Number two is make sure you get a fidelity bond to help protect you and you make everybody aware that if money is stolen, you're going to turn it over to the insurance company and they're going to investigate it and they're going to prosecute. That's a big deterrent. Next thing is in, ensure that you've got separation of duties. Then make sure that you've got cross training in those separating uh, separation of duties and keeping a, a keep your ears really big and listen for the drama and when you hear the drama and you see the drama in your practice try to find out who is the drama person there is that is one of the ways they, they that they disguise what's really going on wherever the drama person is and stirring the pot you want to take a serious look at what they're doing in the practice and how they're doing it and you're gonna find in the majority of cases that can very well be your perpetrator. And that just comes from 21 years of doing this. So the doctor also, the software used in dental colleges, I, I lecture at two of them, is not necessarily what they're gonna find in the practice and they need to become knowledgeable of the software. What reports can I get? call support, become knowledgeable of that, and learn what you can about your reports and how to read them. Another thing that it really comes to mind is if you have a consultant and your office manager comes to you and say, get rid of the consultant, we don't need them, that is a red flag. That is a significant red flag because somebody is now watching. And when you watch, then you can trust but ver uh, verify. What consultants have you worked with, do you recommend or have you worked with over the years? I've worked with a lot of them. Uh, uh, one that comes to mind is uh, Steve Anderson's group, Tops. Another one is uh, uh, I've worked with Fortune Management. I've worked with, uh, I've worked with uh, Sunrise Dental, uh, Sunrise Dental Solutions. Uh, I've worked in a number of them. Where's Sunrise Dental Solutions? I've heard of Steve Anderson Tops. We've had him on the show. Uh, Fortune man, uh, Management. What's that? That's Tony Feck. Sunrise Dental Solutions is Tony Feck and John Muller. Tony Feck and John Miller. Where Muller. are they at? Muller. Muller. M-U-L-L-E-R. Where are they out of? Uh... Uh, Lexington, I believe it is. Lexington, Kentucky. You know, I, I mean, I, I hate repeating myself all the time on these uh, podcasts, but I mean, I just uh, I just always see the best return on investment is getting your house in order, getting a consultant, someone who's done 100 offices in a decade, but the dentist always wants to focus on the, the dishes they prepare at their restaurant. They want to learn more fillings, crowns, implants, root canals, all that. And meanwhile, they're taking PP, PPOs or losing money on. They're getting embezzled from. They wonder why their overhead is so high. They try to do the right thing, like work extra hours. But who cares if you work extra hours, if you work through lunch or stay at the end of the day, if you're doing a procedure you're losing money on because you don't know your cost. And then the lady that's taking the, the check up there is embezzling. <laughs> well, it, uh, by the way, Tony Feck uh, is a dentist, has a pra very successful cosmetic practice. In, uh, in Lexington, and uh, uh, John Muller is a retired dentist, and he does a lot of the mentoring for Tony Feck, and, but there's a lot of good people out there 
But when you have, I've had, I've even had an office manager, two, two of them, two of them walk out when I walk in and I, we just use our first names and they've, they've left and never come back. <laughs> so we've had some interesting times together. That and, is, that... I, and we uh, were very passionate about what we do and, uh, and we've done it for 21 years and we're good at what we do. So um, if someone has a, um, a red flag um, or wants to just talk, uh, how do they, uh, so if they go to, now this is confusing because you're artsy fartsy, <laughs> your name's Bryant Truitt. But your website, you move, you switch the A and the T to Bright Tan and Associates. So don't make that mistake. So if they if they go to your website, brighttanassociates.com, uh, the first dental embezzlement investigation form, uh, you can email info at brighttanassociates.com. Are you concerned about fraud or embezzlement in your dental practice? Um, I see this. Um, download your free vulnerability index to assess your um, chances so you click that and that's a list of 20 points that that will raise a red flag if you answer it truthfully if you do have a problem the red flag will come up and you're answering because at the bottom of that document it's one page document at the bottom it gives you a scale and if you answer no to uh, I believe it's 14 of them then you definitely have a problem in your practice that we need to talk about. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm downloading it now to see. Um, oh, okay, so when you download it, okay, assess your level of risk for fraud, embezzlement, practice management, waste, or abuse. Schedule your free 30-minute consultation day. So you give them a uh, a free 30-minute consultation. Yes, we use we can use the uh, the. Uh, vulnerability index and we can talk about it and and that's what led to this list of problems that this doctor voiced to me the other evening and so from that uh, point we we discuss next steps and we make a proposal and he just makes a business decision and we go from there sir you know I always tell the dentist you know you just need to stay humble and hungry and curious and one of the things that that is so you know if you if you ask anybody to describe a dentist a physician or a lawyer they never say humble they always say arrogant um a lot of them are ambitious so they're hungry and intellectual curious i mean you can't go to eight to twelve years of college and read a thousand books without being intellectually curious but i think one of the things that hurts them so bad when they get embezzled or when they go to the state board or when they get sued is just their ego. I mean, they just, oh my God, because they just, it's, it doesn't fit their personality profile that someone could have done this to them. Uh, they can't accept that someone sued them for a fair, you know, when you, when you take a return to Walmart, they don't even ask the question. You could, you could take in a sleeping bag that was covered in mud and twigs and leaves and say, when I bought this, it had a rip on it. And the lady's not going to say, no, I think you got the rip on it. When you were sleeping in your sleeping bag down by the river creek, they don't even they don't even question the return. They just take it. But when dentists get embezzled against, and when they get sued, or when they go before the state board, oh my God, it just knocks them off their bubble. They get so depressed. They get it just it just crushes them. Do you agree or not? Or disagree? Totally agree. Totally agree. And I'm I'm blessed. I have wonderful clients. Some of them have been with me over twenty years. But that is their, their greatest fear is I don't want to go before the board and I don't want to go and have a lawsuit. And, and it's, there's people out there that can help them. And the greatest thing that can harm them is for them to try to carry these loads by themselves and be self-serving. You cannot be self-serving if you've been sued or you have to go before the board. You're committing suicide. And but trying to communicate this at times is extremely difficult, very difficult. And, and you know, um, people get mad because on Facebook, they know who all their friends are. And they get mad on Dental Town because some people choose to be anonymous. They're not anonymous to me. 
I have two employees that verify every person in downtown, so we know who they are. But this is another reason why we need uh, an anonymous. A lot of people don't want to get on there and share a story that they've been embezzled against when everybody knows their name is John Henry Jones III and he lives right downtown Dallas. Same thing with, with um, posting a root canal that failed. On Facebook, they always post the, the root canal. It's, it's like the, the elk they shot, you know, with antlers, you know, the width of a basketball court. Uh, they, they never post their broken file, their failed root canal, you know. I, I, I leave Dentaltown anonymous if you're choosing because there has to be a place to ask what you might think is a dumb question, an embarrassing question, uh, sharing a story that you don't want everybody to know. But we do have that report abuse button. So if someone anonymously you think is trolling you or being uh, weird or whatever, all you got to do is hit that report abuse button and that, that post will be sent to a bunch of volunteers and they'll decide if this guy is being... Uh, um, abusive because what percent of the time when the dentist call you, are they really embarrassed about that this happened? Probably, I would say 25% of the time. And what percent of the time are they just madder than mad and want to go get their 12 gauge shotgun? I, I would say another 30 to 40% until I can get a hold of them and, and calm them down and and show them that emotion is their single biggest enemy and that if they if they get emotional about it and if they get confrontational about it it could cost them a lot of money they they need to step back from it they need to seek guidance and counsel from a good attorney that can specialize in, in labor and employee law uh, someone like Barbara Freed call Barbara uh, you, you know I had a case near Dallas last year where the doctor just went absolutely ballistic. And he That's helped. not like a doctor. Are you sure it was a dentist? Went absolutely ballistic. I'm just teasing going. I'm dead serious. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are. And he handled it himself and it turned very bad for him. And that, that she sued him uh, along with the lines that we talked about earlier and it got uh, very, it got very nasty, but you, you, you have to look at this as a business situation. You cannot look at it as an emotional situation. And if you do, you're going to pay dearly for it. And I don't want that to happen to any of my clients. So it's maybe 20%, 25% of, uh, I, it's a small percentage. Most of them call and say, how can you help me? Am I really looking at what I think I'm looking at? And they've talked to other people that have referred them to me, such as uh, maybe Jim DeMolin or, or, you know, any number of people. Or they've talked to Kane Waters or they've talked to their CPA or they've talked to an attorney and they've gotten guidance and they have listened or they have talked to their, their spouse and their spouse says, this is a serious situation. You, you need to get guidance and counsel. They've talked to their insurance company. Yeah, it, it, it can be any number of things, Howard. Uh, but they got to control the emotion. Yeah. Barbara Freet, you mentioned. Um, we did a podcast with her. She's an amazing person. So you just recommended her. Uh, if you're listening to this, go back and, and watch Barbara Freet. Um, what's that? It's episode 510. What episode is this? And this is like 725, so it was about 200 days ago. Um, th those are all uh, great deals. How many times do they call you up? Or are they crying? I may have had two of those. I may have. I know I've had one. And, but I may have had two. But that's all. So they're, so they're still holding it together? Yeah. Because, uh, like I say, I, just, I, just, I know my homies, and um, I, I know a guy who got sued and um he got he got sued big time he and uh um he basically that 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 was the end of smiling with dentistry and he only practiced for about a year after the lawsuit and and then he retired he retired early i mean he could do it but i watched this guy with this bubbling personality just loved dentistry more than anything in the whole world then went through this long dong drag out trial that lasted like two weeks and then he lost and got spanked hard 
And he never he never thought of dentistry with a smile on his face again. Then he finally walked away from it. That's I, I'm, I'm I'm very saddened by that because there's a, there's really no need for that. There's enough. There's a lot of professionals out there that can give him uh, assistance and guidance, like yourself and many others. It, and it, it's so funny because they just keep telling you how it's not fair. And I'm like, what is fair on earth? I mean, when you're a gazelle and you go down to the creek to drink and an alligator swallows you, is that fair? I mean, when you're a little bird flying around and a hawk swoops you up, is that fair? I mean, how do people rationalize fair when they're trapped on a rock flying around the sun until they die? I mean, I don't think <laughs> I, I don't think there. I think when there's seven and a half billion humans trapped on a rock orbiting the sun and no one gets off alive to even start with the concept of fair, just stay humble. That's what I always say. Just stay humble. And if you get knocked down, uh, Muhammad Ali said the champions get back to their feet and you never have a failure because if it's a lesson, if you learn something from it, it wasn't a failure. It was a lesson. So God, just, just stay humble, stay hungry and uh, keep riding around the sun uh, once a year. Um, what, so it's uh, next week. 6,000 dental students will graduate from dental schools in the United States and try to all go out and get jobs. And podcasters are, podcasting behavior is huge in dental schools and um, dentists under 30. So you're talking to a bunch of kids right now. Put on your dad hat. If your daughter just walked out of dental school uh, next week and graduates, what would you tell her about this? What advice would, uh, would dad give her? About dentistry or about uh, what, about the podcast or, or what? In, uh, in, in anything. I'm, I'm, I won't limit you. I mean, you've been in dentistry 21 years. What advice would you give her? It's a great profession. It's a great career. It, I admire the dentist, all of them that I work with. I'm very honored to, to work with the dentist that I, I have over the 21 years. I've got some great friends. They've taught me a lot. At the same time, please get involved in the business side of your practice, please. All you have to do is to ask the two biggest questions that embezzlers hate to hear. And that is, why? And tell me more. Why did we do that? And tell me more. When you start asking those kind of questions and you go up to the front desk and say, I want to look at the daily reports. I want to see those reports at the end of the day. And you ask questions about your daily reports. That's their greatest fear is to be asked why and tell me more. And if they cannot answer your question by the end of the day, then you know you have an issue and you'd better start digging because facts have no feelings and they'd better come to you with fact instead of a bunch of feelings and if they become confrontational or they come oh that's no big thing forget about that then you know that you've got an issue there that would be my open the door learn to ask questions about what's going on and why and tell me more about this. If you have knowledge, you are in control. If you don't have the knowledge of your practice and you don't have your AR report and you don't know how to write an insurance report and you don't know the problems of credit balances and you don't know how to turn a credit balance into a uh, chair time, then you've got issues and you'd better get them straightened out. That's what I would tell them. I've seen this my whole life, so go back to my uh, childhood in Kansas where I was born and raised. Um, you know, it, it's always the 80-20 rule. It's like 20% of the wheat farmers, dairy farmers, cattle farmers, soybean, were making all the money and 80% weren't. And it always seemed like when the dad was sitting on a tractor all day and the mom was completely involved in the business, sitting at the kitchen table with the calculator and, and knew all the costs and everything, they were crushing it. But when uh, the, the guy sitting on the tractor – didn't, have, didn't understand the business. No one was helping them, whatever. They just they just bumbled along through life. Um, I bet you that 55% who don't get embezzled, a lot of them, uh, their spouse will come in and do a separation of duty. Um, I know a lot of uh, a lot of dentists who has a sister 
or a, a, a grandma or a mom or somebody that comes from bookkeeping, banking, financing, whatever, and they come in and do, uh, and they're the only ones that can do the adjustments. Um, the canceled checks should be mailed to the dental office. Those should be mailed home. Uh, they should know that all the canceled checks are going to come to your house and you're going to open up and look at them out. It's about separation of duties. And again, it's a, a lot of times it's always that one person who has to, who does everything, wears all the hats. If it has to do with money, insurance, deposits, anything with that, she wears all the hats. Like you say, she comes in early, she works alone, she doesn't ever take vacation, she doesn't want anybody to know her stuff, and uh, and then your spouse starts coming in. Um, I, I think um, some uh, groups of dentists, uh, uh, I, there's, if you're a dentist in the family, usually you got a sister, a cousin, an uncle, somebody is in banking, finance, insurance, accounting, bookkeeping, I mean, especially some of these big extended families, there's you, you've got a sister, first cousin, grandma, mom, dad. You got someone that can come in your dental office and help you in this situation, too. Because I know my homies, and this is this is what I'll tell you. There's no research or evidence that when you study the brains of 100 different mice or 100 different chimpanzees or 100 different dolphins that one's a genius and the other's not. You know, take away pathology. So we probably all got the same damn brain. It's what are you interested in? And if you're not interested in the business, the bookkeeping, I mean, there's how much, what percent of dentists wouldn't even know how to enter uh, an insurance check and make a deposit? And what, what, what percent of them don't even have any of those skill sets? I would say today in the age groups, even the ones that get out of dental school, I've, I've had them look at me look like deer in the headlights when I mentioned what is an EOB? They don't even have a clue. What, what, what percent of the dentists could not even do the front office activities? 80, 80, 90 percent. Yeah, and those 80 to 90 percent of the dentists got A's in calculus, geometry, physics. They're not dumb. They're just not interested. So, dude, if you're not interested in this, you can't have one person doing it all for you. Or it's probably a 43, 47 percent chance she's going to be skimming money off the top and embezzling. You got to separate the duties. You need to find someone that you can trust a spouse, a sister, a cousin, someone uh, to break up some of these duties so that it's going to take at least two people. The only time I've seen two people embezzling is when the mother and the daughter work together, two sisters work together. Uh, these two girls uh, actually went through grammar school and high school together, and they're like Bonnie and Clyde together. Um, and, and, and I think your best advice, which I've been saying forever, is – Gosh darn, get a CPA who specializes in dentistry. I mean, in 1900, there was only one type of doctor, and he did everything. He delivered your baby, fixed your broken leg, he did everything. Now the, the MDs have 58 specialties, the dentists have nine, and there's CPAs for the last 10, 20 years that have just been focusing on only dentistry, on dental town. There's a CPA guy uh, named uh, uh, Tim Lott who we podcasted on, and he's part of these uh, – American Association of Dental CPAs. We've had Kane Waters on just like a few weeks ago. Kane Waters out of Dallas. What I love the most about Kane Waters is they won't even take you on as a client unless you bring your spouse with you. And at the end of the year, and they'll they'll block off two days. And if you if they don't think you paid attention and listened and got it, they'll fire you as a client. I mean, they want. They, they, I mean, I mean, money. I mean, they say divorce is only a third, a third, a third, a third over money, a third over sex, and a third over substance abuse. So if you're not cheating, beating, and drunk, um, you're probably fighting over money. And, um, you know, you mislead your spouse all the time when you say, my God, I did five crowns a day. And the spouse saying, well, how much you get for a crown? You say a thousand. She's saying, damn, we made 5,000. But she didn't see that that thousand dollar crown was a PPO and, and $400 was adjusted off. And then after you made rent, mortgage, equipment, bill, that computer, insurance, professional dues, whatever, uh, you lost money. Uh, and that, that, and that $3,000 you put into the, uh, that's in the savings account, you owe a third of that to the IRS. I mean, uh, so just, um, again, from two old dogs who have been in this industry a long time, get your house in order, get your business in order, buy a dental consultant before you buy a laser, a CAD cam, a scanner, um, and, and my biggest red flag to dentists, and I'll end on this, my biggest red flag to dentists is when they look in the mirror and they know they're not interested in the details of the business. They don't know their numbers, 
And, and I'll refer them back to Shark Tank. I wish you and your spouse would start watching Shark Tank because they ask the same 20 questions over and over and over. And when Mark Cuban and Mr. Wonderful are asking these questions, I'm thinking, what percent of the dentists couldn't answer any of those questions about their own damn dental office that they've been standing in for 20 years? Unfortunately, you're 1,000% correct. <laughs> and I've done the work with, with uh, Kane Waters for 20 years. And they do an, an incredible job for their clients. Uh, and I work with a lot of CPAs and a lot of attorneys. But get a dental, get a dental <laughs> CPA for God's sake. You've got to do that. And if you don't, you're going to be in serious trouble because they know how to peel back the onion. My final okay? question. You were born and raised in Texas, right? I was born in Houston and I'm an oil field brat. So are you a Mavericks fan, a Spurs fan, a Cowboys fan? Who are your, who are your professional teams? None of them. I'm strictly the University of Texas Longhorns. Oh, you like college ball. There, there, there's two distinct types of football fans. You either love the NFL or you love college, but you don't really meet a lot of people who love them both, do you? No, you really don't, Howard. You know, I hadn't thought about that, but you're you're correct. I, you're a, you're a thousand percent correct. I, it, I hadn't thought about that until now. It really is, and you'd think if you love football, you wouldn't care if it was college or NFL. But no, those fans, you can separate them right down the middle. They're either all college or all NFL. It's kind of like in the mouth. You either have a bunch of gum disease and no cavities. Or you get a bunch of cavities, no gum disease, because those bacteria um, don't uh, uh, live in the same biofilm uh, so well. But uh, so you're a college, you're a Longhorns fan. That's uh, what city is that in? Austin, the city weird. The city weird. OK, so can my homies call you? Absolutely. What's your number? My cell number is uh, 210-241. 6329. That's 210-241-6329. Can they email you? Yes, sir. Go to the website, Brightan and Associates, and they can email me very quickly at Bryant at Brightan, B-R-Y-T-A-N, Associates.com. All right, buddy. And, uh, and, and if you ever uh, get the urge, you might make an online CE course on Dentaltown. Those millennials love watching online. We got 411 courses, but maybe someday you'll create an online uh, CE course. Or if you got that 70 red flags, you got to write an article. 40, I'm going uh, um, to talk to your son about the 70 red flags. And uh, I'm, I'm tied up in a case right now, but I will... Uh, talk to your son about getting you a list of those and you can look them over and maybe we can talk about them. Okay? All right, buddy. Hey, Brian, thank you so much for all that you do for dentistry. Well, thank you for what all you do for dentistry. All right, buddy. I hope you have a rocking hot day. And you have a, you have a super weekend and a holiday. Oh, that's right. It's Memorial Day weekend. Are you going to do anything fun? Yes, work. Yeah, same here. I'm, uh, I'm podcasting all day Memorial Day because that's when a lot of these uh, busy guys have free. So uh, it's going to be a good, great day for podcasting. Okay, thanks, Thank Ryan. Thank you again.